Who are your heroes in mediation and in conflict resolution? You know, it's a, it's a legitimate question. Um, I, I, there's no one I look up to. I hate to say that. Uh, there's no one who really moves me or inspires me in uh, mediation. I, I, I saw it. I saw the light many years ago. I actually believe, and I know I sound grandiose, that I've done more forging in the field to promote the professional uh, level of mediation and the uh, depth and breadth of mediation than anyone I personally know, even above organizations. Think about it. Unbeknownst to you, there are, organ- there are organizations of mediators. One is called, I-, I won't name them, but there's organizations of mediators. You haven't heard anything from them. You haven't seen legislation from them. They don't lobby. There's no advertising. So I think I've done more to promote this system. So I'm my own lead. And, and, and as grandiose as that sounds, that's my candid opinion. And how do people learn from you? Is it through UCLA Extension? You train people to become mediators? Yes, that's what I have two streams of revenue. One is training, one is doing actual cases. And the training, my primary training is uh, how to create mediators. California has a minimum standard of 25 hours of training to be a mediator. That's the minimum standard. And so that, that minimum standard, that classroom experience, is what I teach and have taught through UCL Extension for about 15 years now. So I, I trained, believe it or not, judges come to me, attorneys come to me. It, historically, at UCLA, it's always true, about 33% of all my classes are attorneys and judges because they're going to try to make a transition. When's your next class? The next class isn't scheduled yet. What's happened is this. Um, all, exten- all training and extension courses in, in every university are down. The economy is killing them. And in fact, uh, UCLA Extension, just to give you, a, it's an interesting story. Um, prior to this economy, UCLA Extension for all these years has been the number one provider of extended education to postgraduate professionals ever. But the, anyone else is a distant second. NYU was their, their next close competitor, but they were so far, the second is scary. Even UCLA Extension has had to cut back their um, extension classes. So right now, my class and many classes are on hold until enrollments go back up. So there's nothing scheduled at this time. Are they the only ones that certify mediators? No, I'm the only person they use there. Are there other locations to receive training on how to become a mediator? Yeah, sure. What I'm saying is, does becoming a mediator require certification? I'm going to give you a yes-no answer. It's mostly yes. If you want to do it, legitimately, you want to do it for a court, you want to do it for somebody, they're going to see what your credential is, and it starts with the minimum basic training. Right now, because mediation is not yet regulated by the state as a profession, it reg- they don't re- regulate the people, they regulate some of the uh, methods we use. I'll explain that in a minute. But the uh, state does not now regulate us. There's no certificate, there's no license, so everything is a self-certification. Said in another way, Kim, you could right now put in your business card mediator at large and not be illegal. You would be unethical, but you would not be illegal. So the answer is anyone can call themselves a mediator, but if you want to go according to the existing standard, the adopted standard, it starts with a 25-hour training. So why can't you do a 25-hour training? Why does it have to be through UCLA? If you're asking me, I I teach this independently. Uh, I used to teach it very regularly uh, to corporations, because remember, conflict is everywhere. So uh, I, I can certify them as mediators, but it's just what they're applying it to, as I mentioned a long time ago, what they're going to use it for. But I used to do, I do corporate training all the time. It's just these days, um, training is the first to go. When, when things get lean in companies, training is the first thing to go. I would imagine this would be one of the first important trainings that everybody in business should have, which is conflict resolution. You and I agree. Conflict resolution is up there. And equal to that, is, as I mentioned earlier, is emotional intelligence. It's Indeed. called EI. It's you put those together, now you've got something. Now you have something. Above all else, even above those two, if I was talking to an employer, I would say emotional intelligence. If you're certified in California as a mediator, right. can you mediate something in Florida or in one of those states? It's yes, no. The yes part is yes, because no state, no state in the United States yet regulates the profession of mediation. Nobody. However, if you mediate for their courts, they expect some minimum standards. But those court cases, those are all volunteers. Anyone who mediates for the court, in essence, everybody who mediates for the court, is a mediator as a volunteer. The court does not assign, like that. the court always assigns cases to mediation in California uh, for civil matters, but uh, those mediators are not being paid. Otherwise, it's like the judge ordering you to pay somebody. That's important. But the question really is, 
if somebody is in another state and it's not court ordered mediation. Right. Anybody can mediate it. That's my answer. You could mediate a problem between a couple in another state as long as that state is. Since they're coming in voluntarily, it doesn't matter. Anybody right. can mediate anywhere. So there's no state certificate. So does the 25 hour certificate mean anything to anybody in Florida? It means nothing. Whether you have it or not, it's just can you mediate? Got it. Answer, yeah. It's only if you start doing some civil cases for the court that they have to have some minimum standard of training. So really, there's enough conflict to last many lifetimes. It's unbelievable, and it's just getting worse. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to have you on the show. You've shared so much with our audience. John B. and Cardi, you're a jewel, and I hope that you will come back again. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking to John B. and Cardi, the founder of Divorce Mediation Associates. I think after listening to this interview, you know that he's more qualified than most people in the world to provide affordable mediation. You can reach him by going to www.dma-divorce.com. Thanks so much, John. Thank you, Kim. And thank you for the audience. too. My pleasure.